Hey everyone, here is a quick lesson defining friction and uh, outlining types of problems that we'll see that involve friction. So we are going to look at what variables affect friction, uh, develop an equation that relates friction to those variables, um, and then take a look at some problems that involve friction. So we don't need to worry about frictionless surfaces anymore. First off, the direction of the frictional force always opposes sliding. Um, so if something is sliding to the right, obviously the frictional force is to the left. This gets a little bit more difficult when we have objects at rust, but we will talk about that when we get there. Uh, the amount of force from friction depends on two things. The first, how sticky the interacting materials are. So that is called the coefficient of friction. The symbol for coefficient of friction is this lowercase mu. And mu has no units. The other thing that affects the force of friction is how hard the two materials are being pushed together. And that is called in physics the normal force. So if we have a three kilogram block sliding down an incline, it's going down and to the right, the friction is opposing that slide. And so the friction must be pointed up and to the left. If we have that same block sliding up the ramp, again, the direction of the frictional force is going to be opposing that slide, and so the direction of the force would be down and to the right. Now, if we have that three kilogram block sitting stationary on the incline, what is the direction of the friction? What we have to do here is think about what forces are acting on this block, and then imagine the frictional force opposing that motion. So the only two forces acting on this block are the force of gravity pulling straight down and the normal force pushing out perpendicular to the plane. So without friction, this would be sliding down and to the right. So the friction must be opposing that to keep it from moving, so the friction is directed up and to the left. This one is a little bit tricky. Let's say that the thin green block is pulled to the right, so we slide this out this way. What is the direction of the friction force on the red block? Well, if there was no friction again, relative to the green block, the red block would be moving to the left, right? The red block would be holding still if there was no friction, and so the slide would be to the left. So with friction, the slide is to, or sorry, the, with friction, it moves to the right, so the friction is pushing right. Friction can be static or kinetic. Static friction is when um, the object is not moving and the friction is just holding it in place. Kinetic friction is when the object is sliding. The coefficient of static friction between two materials is always larger than the coefficient of kinetic friction. Friction? Friction. The coefficient of static friction is always greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction. So static is not moving, kinetic is sliding. The equation for kinetic friction is mu k fn. The coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. The static friction isn't e an equation, it's actually an inequality. Because the static friction can match whatever force is trying to get the thing to move up, into a, up to a certain threshold. The coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So we can think of that as the max static friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. When we have a rolling object, we are actually dealing with static friction. Even though that thing is moving, there's no sliding involved. And so if we think about the individual contacts with different parts of the wheel with the surface, there's no sliding going on, and at that instant, that is moving, or the area of the wheel that is in contact with the ground is just stationary. A wheel that is sliding, like skidding to a stop, would be considered kinetic friction. Quick recap of the rules of friction before we get into our practice problem. Friction always opposes sliding. It is independent of speed, so it's different than air drag. Air drag usually has some function that is um, proportional to the speed of the object, but sliding friction is independent of the speed. It does depend on the normal force and on the interacting materials, but is also independent of surface area. Please go ahead and work through these examples on your own. The third one is a bit tricky, but I think you guys can get it. Uh, and we'll go over them in class together.